to adjourn executive session. Make a motion. Tom, second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Could I also have a motion to return to the regular session, please? I'll move that also. Aye, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Next on the agenda is the superintendent's report with Dr. Hewitt. Yeah, I have a few items tonight. One is um, a presentation, and the others are, are more conversation with the board. The first one is I asked Jamie Seidkett, our director of instructional technology, to do a presentation um, uh, on a topic that we've been working on. So I'm not sure. All right. Hi. Good evening. Hey, Jamie. All right, the topic and the reason I'm here tonight is to talk about Smart Schools Bond Act. I wanted to share a little background information about what the Smart Schools Bond Act is and also introduce our first preliminary investment plan for the district. Uh, Smart Schools Bond Act was voted on upon New York State voters back in November of 2014. And what the legislation did was approve the use of $2 billion and those funds were allocated for New York State school districts. The funds can be used for technology infrastructure, equipment, um, security upgrades, and also to modernize facilities. So there are some school districts using a lot of portable classrooms um, or to construct uh, pre-K classrooms. Cerrito City School District's allocation was almost $1.8 million. These funds don't expire. Even though it was voted on back in 2014, the funds do not expire, they're there, but they're also not in a bank account. We have to follow a, a certain approval pathway to use them, and that's what brings me here tonight. Our pathway and process, what we have to go through to use these smart schools funds, it's a little time consuming, but it's also a system of checks and balance with the state to make sure that we're using the funds appropriately. And it starts off with our district submitting and having New York State approve our instructional technology plan. Our last plan was submitted September of 2018 and approved by the state, and it's a three-year cycle. So that plan will expire at the end of the 2021 school year. So we've kind of met that first requirement. Our district has also been, I'd say, on and off doing an assessment needs. Every year, Dean, Carrie, Heidi, Nancy, and myself, we have conversations about smart schools and, and bounce ideas around, okay, is the time right? Do we want to start looking at using some of those funds? And we really kind of feel that now is the time, and I'll go over what our plan is in a moment, but I also wanted to kind of go through what we have to do after tonight. We have a preliminary plan that we have, and we also want to make sure that we're engaging our community and kind of showcasing that plan to the community. So part of the requirement is that we have to publicly post information for 30 days. So tomorrow morning, what I'll be doing is posting the information that I'm about to share with you. We'll leave it posted on our website, trying to engage anybody, seeing if there's any feedback from the community. And at our August 20th board meeting, I'm gonna ask Dean to have a, a public hearing on this. And we've already discussed that, and I think that's kind of what we might be doing to have a public hearing where anybody that saw our plan could address it and offer feedback. At that point, if we wanted to make revisions to our plan of what we're intending on spending this money on, we could make revisions if needed. If not, we could actually, you know, you as a board could decide to move forward with the plan and actually adopt it on August 20th during that board meeting. And we do need Board of Education approval of our investment plan before we submit the plan to New York State. Once submitted to New York State, we also have to, because of what we'll be doing, um, <coughs> what our proposal is anyways, we would need to also include the Office of Facilities to, because of some of the cable runs that we'll be doing. Um, but once we eventually receive New York State approval, we have to publicly post that we have approval and that we're moving forward with the plan to let the community know we are using these funds. Then we can finally begin our purchasing process. Mm -hmm. Overall, from other districts that are, have gone through this process, it's taken well over a year to complete this and get approval from the state. Our end of things, it, it goes pretty smoothly, but because so many districts are doing this statewide, it does get bottlenecked up at the state level for approval. Our investment plan and why we feel time is right, we have almost $1.8 million. There's a lot of different funding sources that we utilize to really maintain our technology infrastructure 
different uh, federal programs that we can use to help aid when certain purchases. <coughs> With our security system, um, we felt that this was a great opportunity to take a look at that and address some, some deficiencies in what, where the cameras are pointing, but also update some of the back-end equipment that the cameras connect to. This proposal is for just over $1 million of our 1.8, and I know it's not exactly 1.8, but I think you know what I mean. So it is $1,040,000. Jamie, can I ask a question? Absolutely. In our capital project that we've just approved and we're going to move forward with, isn't there some uh, security camera uh, stuff designated in there or no? There is only, it wasn't a big project like this to replace certain existing cameras. Just to add some. Just for the areas that they're working on, anything that would be removed to put different things in there or, or certain areas that they're renovating, like at Layton by the, the hallway, I forget what we call and that, the, the gym new, hallway. And new exterior athletic facilities. Yeah. Okay. There are cameras built into that. Yes. So will those be integrated, those two processes together? So what we're going to do here and there, so we're not doing it twice would be coordinated. So yes. any improvement we're doing simultaneously? Yes. Well, it might not happen at the same time. Right. But essentially we're looking at, and what we did is, I'm going to take this next slide here. This is a breakdown of cost, how we get to 1040000 And what we did to make sure there's no overlap, uh, David, Chris, Pulley, and I went and met with every building principal. They know the buildings very well. They know where certain areas are deficient with certain camera views inside and outside of the building. And we're not worried about the new field, so to speak, on this project. We are updating certain exterior cameras that face the fields preemptively to know, okay, this camera is very old. Let's get a little bit better camera in that location and let's update it. But what we did not do with this project is kind of anticipate there's going to be a new um, all-purpose field next to the high school. We're, we didn't anticipate putting a camera on that press box or anything like that. Right. No, I was more along the construction phase of things. Yep. So if yeah, everything's being opened up, that it's going to be done at, the, at that I, time. We're not yeah, going to do it twice. I think I know the answer to your question. We, we will coordinate with our architect Great. and engineers that are on our capital project. Okay. So we're going to make sure that the materials that we purchase, the equipment we purchase, and the location and infrastructure ties into what's planned for the future. Great. You mean as far as things and things like that? Yeah, yeah. anything we're going to open up just so we Sorry. don't incur the cost yep. twice. Yep. Yep. Um, as far as the interior cameras, it would be $217,000 worth of the project. Oswego High School has approximately 62 old analog cameras, which all you need, I mean, they're just not the best quality. You can't zoom in on them. Um, so what we're looking to do is replace those with more modern internet-based cameras. And overall, be 97 total interior cameras that would be getting replaced, and then some new ones as well. Exterior cameras, we followed the same kind of idea. You know, what areas were lacking, and where could we add them, and what needs to be replaced. So if there was a very old camera, like at the back of Layton facing our fields, obviously that's something that we took into consideration and we're replacing those. Network video recorders, and this is something, and this is why we really felt the time is right to move forward with the project now. Knowing how long this project will take at the state level to get approval before we can actually get working on things, uh, the network video recorders are what the cameras plug into. So that's where all of our security footage is stored. Those are aging, and they're right now Four, in between four and five years old. Doesn't sound very old, but they're constantly running, they're constantly recording footage and overwriting themselves. So what happens eventually, obviously things break down. When they're always running, you don't get that much of a life expectancy out of those servers. And the vendor, our company that we work with, says you can expect four to, six, four to seven years out of those. We're on year five. By the time we get this approved and get working on it, will be at the end of their expected life cycle. And we did have some minor issues with a couple of them last year, but we've, they're still running and we've got over that. Installation and equipment, obviously that's ripping out old cables from our old cameras and running new stuff. Where we don't need to run new cables, we obviously won't. But some of the old cameras are actually not even uh, Cat5 cable, internet cabling. They're actually how you plug in your, your cable TV at home. Um, they're analog connection. Fees and contingencies. So that's how we get to our investment plan total. And now this is what we're kind of, where we're heading next. We have our preliminary investment plan. We'll post this as I mentioned. Hold the public hearing. Receive any feedback from the public on this plan. Ask the board to approve this, uh, formally approve it. 
and then we can submit it on our uh, New York State portal and wait for approval. This would leave us uh, assuming that, worst case scenario, we do use the entire contingency that we budgeted for, it would leave us with almost 750000 that would not expire, which we're also kind of recommending. We just kind of leave that be and let that sit for if we have to replace things in a few more years. I think it's important for me to just talk for a minute about the fact that the Smart Schools Bond Act, when we came to the district initially, when I was assistant superintendent, we had some conversations at that time about how we could plan for the allocation of these monies, what would the final allocation look like. At that time, remember, we were entering an, an era of fiscal stress. There, there is a requirement that we spend the money to get the money on the Smart Schools Bond Act money. So we weren't in the position then. And also we were in the midst of planning for the capital project, rebuilding, rebuilding our financial infrastructure. And so we've been delaying <coughs> having ongoing conversations from the summer of 2014 until today. And now we think the time is right to enhance safety and security through this money. That's why I asked Jamie to move forward. Quick question just on the, uh, because the process is so um, cumbersome, yeah. it takes so long, and we are leaving the 800,000, but we do know that it's gonna cost us in another five years, another 270,000, probably more, because we'll have to again replace. As we think about long-term budgeting, is it possible with this money to incorporate a long-term segment in there so you have the funds and you have it available to you, or does it have to be spent within a certain amount of time? It doesn't have to, well, Short answer is, it, yes, it would have to be spent because we put in totals, and if we kind of put a project in right now, let's say in five years from now, we say, okay, we want to buy these video recorders, prices will change so much that you have to go through the whole process again to get it reapproved with the new quotes. So essentially, it, it would be the same amount of legwork to kind of hold the money and just wait to figure out what we want to do at that point. There's no benefit, and I guess I would just say, um, that as we as we look forward then as we're thinking about long-term budgeting that is a piece that i think right. we need to just realize is is reality right and we did actually um working with nancy when the governor came through with additional funding for uh schools this budget season um i don't know if you remember one of the last updates nancy did there was thirty-five thousand dollars kind of allocated for technology and that was in case one of these video servers fail. Working with Nancy, that is something that we kind of anticipated. Geez, worst case scenario, let's budget for this yeah. and kind of start thinking about these are at an age where we might need to be replaced. And because the turnaround time at SED is so problematic, that's why we think it's a good idea to have a contingency slush fund. I, we think, I, I think this is far more than we need, but Heather's right, by the time we get the appropriate approvals, but that previous slide, remember, is a budget, which is an estimate. And it could end up being, you know, 1.26 million, that dollar amount. So mm -hmm. then we'll be able to take from that remaining 749. The money that's left over, if a building needed, like, a program like Plato, can that money be used for a program to support our at-risk students. It's, it was really intended for software and licensing. It was more intended for equipment. It could be, I mean, part of the, the I guess, I don't want to say procedures, but some of the guidelines say that you can't use it for equipment. So if we had to outfit a computer lab, like that is something that I, I, would, I wouldn't anticipate using this funding for, uh -huh. um, only because we could, if, if those types of things, like Plato and those types of things, we kind of build into our annual budgets and expected costs for the district. Um, it's made more for equipment than it is for licensing. Okay. And you can't purchase long-term licenses with it as well. If I buy a piece of equipment, or I'm sorry, I mean, but if we buy as a district a piece of equipment and it comes with a license, you can pay for it with these funds. But you can't say, I'm gonna pay for Plato for the next 10 years. Okay. You cannot do that. Good question. Jamie, the, okay, so years ago, because I remember Ben and Nancy presenting that they're redoing the cameras. Yes. Are these the cameras that you're replacing? No. They did cameras, um, it was a couple years before I came on board. They put in a lot of cameras in other buildings, and those were all IP-based, internet-based cameras. The ones that we are replacing at the high school are all, they predate that project. They are all old analog cameras, which the best way I can explain it is think of that little cable you throw into the back of your TV. That's how they send video. And the type of connection they are, they're just not clear cameras to the point where this year a couple of them have broken down where we're like, we're not even going to replace that camera. 
we're going to see it's close enough to our identifier that we're going to run a new cable to it. And we've looked into different things like that because those cameras are <coughs> Very updated. You're absolutely I just, right. I, I remember them presenting this, yes. and, and I remember him saying specifically that you know kids could be standing on the smoker's corner there, and we can zoom in and see right. what they're. Yes, and several of our cameras. So those are still. Those cameras are still good. We're not replacing all of those, but we are. Uh, for example, I believe it is the West Wall casing softball fields. A couple of those cameras are very old analog. They weren't replaced in that project. They predate that project. We're replacing those ones. So anything that was kind of left off the replacement schedule for that last project. Kathleen, the, what you're talking about was a project that um, was around 2016. They started talking about it in 15, 16, then I came in. Mm -hmm. Those were leftover monies from a previous capital project, and you're right. We spent significant dollars that were left over from a previous capital project to buy the first wave of what Jamie's intending to do now with this okay. to enhance it further. We still were left with analog cameras. Yeah, there's about 60 interior at the high school and then several exterior, a couple of exterior at each building. Um, no, sorry, there's no analog only at the high school, but there's a couple at each building that we are either going to, we're looking at a couple of various things, increased cameras, but a lot of those ones from that project in 15, 16, we're not replacing those. Those are still good. And in that project, we added, not only did we replace um, some old bad cameras, but we added significant cameras, I recall specifically to the middle school, cameras that shine from the building on to the foot, toward the football stadium, toward the um, parking lots, the parking lot toward the, the, zone, the yeah, forms. toward the nature trails, yeah. um, and Sam was part of that, because mm -hmm. that, uh, it was facilities committee work as well. And uh, yeah. the RTUs at the middle school replaced those, they yes. with leftover, right, Excel money. Yes. That's right, it was an Excel money. That's right. Okay. Right. Any other questions? Thank you. Thanks, Jamie. A couple other things that I wanted to discuss, but um, things that we actually had um, planned on talking about in our reorganizational meeting, and that ran long because we did a lot of great things. Um, the first one I think that we need to have a conversation with um, is the, the board's level of engagement in school boards associations. As you recall, we had some conversation about this over the last several years, starting in 2016, when I suggested that the board return to the New York State School Boards Association after a hiatus from those folks. Um, and then last year, there was, some, there was some significant conversation at the board level about whether or not the board was interested in, in engaging not only with the New York State School Boards, but also the Central New York School Boards. The, the bottom line is the New York State School Boards Association is the leader group, the advocacy group for school boards associations across the state, including CNY and local county school board associations. We have two invoices for the board to consider, um, and I, we just need your feedback so that we can move forward with um, engaging with these groups. New York State School Boards Association bill for us this year would be $11,064. We have not um, paid that invoice because we hadn't had a chance to talk to the board about it, but not only does New York State School Boards provide a quality of service to school boards across New York State, but they also provide advocacy for school districts. Additionally, they provide support for school, um, for district and board clerks, as well as professional development and the New York State School School Boards Conference. So that's one piece. Um, Dean, I'm some, sorry, can yes. I just interrupt for a second? Sure. Okay, so that, we, we weren't members for a little bit? We weren't members correct? for years, and then when I became superintendent, I met with New York State School Boards, and they offered <coughs> us a return rate of 50%, right. as Hello. well as a financial audit for one year. Okay. And we did, and we did benefit right. from that. Um, rec we recouped some, from s some state monies, as well as paying about a $5,000 dues. We've stayed with them since then. Okay. And then last year, Amy had an interest in engaging with also Central New York. And you remember it was a board meeting at the middle school, and you talked about it quite a bit, and you discussed the pros and cons of being in both associations. And ultimately, you decide, the board decided to go with New York State School Boards and Central New York. The Central New, New York School Boards Association invoice is an additional $6,953.27. So the conversation that I would like you to have tonight and the decision that I'd like you to reach is whether or not to engage with 
either or both associations so that Karen can um, pay the invoices. What do we get from CNY? What are the benefits of Dues for participation in the Central New York School Boards Association. Um, they know that they sponsor some regional events. They, um, social and educational, they did a, a school um, safety and security presentation, I believe, last year at the college. Are you precluded from those if you don't have membership? I don't think so. I think you can go, but you pay an extra fee, a higher fee. Yeah. If you remember, you can do free. Okay. They also do a few social events. I know that they always sponsor an event where uh, school boards, members, and superintendents come together. And they, they usually ask for one representative from the board mm -hmm. to participate in their board meetings. Yeah. So. We also got a discounted rate, didn't we, last year? For the initial year, didn't we negotiate for CNY? That? CNY. I, I remember Sam saying. I don't remember whether that was true or not. Well, we held, we held off joining until, uh, I can't remember the gentleman's name, he came and gave a presentation, and he offered us yeah. You know, if you'll come back, we'll put let you in for this much. It's for giving you audience. Yeah, Char 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 yeah. Charles. Charles. Yeah. Charles. Yeah. yeah that's that <coughs> we, I, we can find out what it was. Is it less than what we're being asked to pay this year? I'm sure it was. I don't know. So a lot of this stuff, I mean, we get notices all the time via email about uh, conferences and stuff being held, uh, attorneys putting in presentations and everything. But everything's usually down around Albany or Buffalo, and, and a lot of it, I don't think we take advantage of it. The because New York when you go, even though you belong, when you go, you still have to pay a fee. Yeah. Correct? I mean, there's nothing for, free. For either association, yeah. that's true. Nothing However, free. for the New York State School Boards Association, you get the, you'll get you get their monthly newsletter. You, they have legal services. They have, um, there's, they do advocacy in Albany. We're CNA, CNY is more regional. Yeah. They're a support for you. I think the, I think it's important that we belong to NISBA. I think yeah. I don't think it's as important that we belong to Central New York. And if we want to save seven thousand dollars, there's a good opportunity to do it. The, t the events that I've gone to for both of them, I felt that the NISBA were uh, more thorough, uh, with a better representation. They were more impactful. I thought, and uh, I did my initial training with CNY school boards, but then followed up with the evaluation seminar in Rochester with NISPA and just felt it was, it, it had a lot more, um, I don't know, just, it was much more thorough. Mm -hmm. And then also the uh, the information, the advocacy groups that they do, they're continually in con contact and I think we need to take more advantage of that in, in organizing and, and reaching out and following up with that advocacy. NISPA is a force in advocating for school reform, um, foundation aid, right. a whole bunch of things like that. I'm not as familiar with what CNY does, but I would strongly suggest that you stay with this bunch. That'd be my recommendation. The other, I don't have an opinion on. It's up to you. Uh, well, CNY, I mean, I think they do a lot more locally, obviously, than ISMA will do. Um, not against ISMA, but I'm also a supporter of CNY just for that. That, if I recall from their presentation, I think we were like the only district that wasn't. <laughs> Maybe not. It seems like most districts were involved with CNY too. Were, we weren't the only one, but there were there were few that were not. Yeah, I mean, I know they. I get emails from them sometimes and some things they're doing. Like I think they were the ones. That I think they were the ones that, like sponsored Dan and Bob and things like that. Mm -hmm. But we also have the Westfield County School Board Association that we belong to also. They do more local things. Yeah, like, that's yeah. a seven hundred. Yeah. That's a seven hundred dollar. Uh, yeah, that's that's the that's another one. Yeah. 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 In this one, it would be helpful for you if something comes up and you need to get information. Right. Yeah, but I, you know, right. Right. It's, it's, it's I it's was at right. Central New York right. as yeah representative. Um, you were impressed. Well, I, I just. No. <laughs> <laughs> and they're in Oswego County. Yes, and that's $700. Yeah. And I think that's what I'm thinking of. That's, yeah, they did, that's right. probably they did the ball. 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 They asked for representation on that one as well. I don't know. On the Central Oswego County. On the Oswego County. I don't know. Yeah. 
representation. Yeah. Yeah, participation and representation. Okay. I mean, it's up to us to do, but yeah. Yeah. I, I know. Uh, yes. but we, we, did, we did pay our dues last year for that organization. But if there's a fee that, you know, goes along with some event that they're doing, then it's less expensive for us to just pay the fee as we go. Right. Then to do this. If they can choose. And did we, um, is the, I know also at one time years ago we were on this, Small school district. I what was those. that one? That's that small city that school one? district association. I don't pay the fee, but I go to all the. Okay, so events. we don't pay the fees on that one. Anymore. They always invite me anyway. So. Okay. <laughs> okay. Right. So do we sure need a uh, yeah. yeah. formal motion, motion and, a, and a vote on this? No, I, I, like I just want to know what the wishes of the board are. Is what the wishes. Formally, I'm, yes. a, I'm assuming by the conversation that it's a yes for New York State School yes. Boards yes. Association, um, Central New York, no, no. Um, and still stay with the Swiggle County. Correct. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the next item is um, I have an interest. I I talked to Heather about it as a gender review and. Um, cabinet feels strongly that there was a missing link over the last year when we moved. Remember when we moved from um, the committee structure and we had one meeting a month that was committee and the second meeting a month was our business meeting and we felt that we were missing opportunities to be timely in approving resolutions at that meeting that was based on for committees only. So I recommended at the time and, and we were always bringing stuff in on the meeting that was supposed to be about committee conversation because we need to operate the business of the district. So we were approving resolutions at both meetings. And at that point, we decided to become a little more informal. We would engage with the audience. It would be my recommendation and request right now that we move back to a regular committee format, not a committee meeting. We would always pass resolutions that would be the operation of the district every two weeks. But I would like to reinstitute the three agenda-based committees that we had before. We always had a personnel committee, a curriculum committee, and a finance committee. And it, they, would, they would be represented by two to three school board members on each of those committees. And they would meet the Thursday or Friday before the actual meeting to review the agenda section for the committee that they're on. So for example, um, Linda used to sit on the curriculum committee when I was the assistant superintendent for curriculum and instruction. She would sit with me with a couple other board members on the Thursday or Friday before the meeting and I would re review my curriculum resolutions with her. It did a couple things. It, it created additional level of transparency and it also provided some advocacy and conversations at the board meeting when we were reading resolutions around curriculum because two or three board members had already engaged with me about what that was and they could reach out to they could help answer questions it was I, I think it was a better system so I would I would ask the board to consider creating those three additional committees that are agenda based committees yep. based on the three agenda portions of our um, regular operating agendas of, on personnel curriculum and finance um, the members of the board that sit on those committees could collaboratively with whatever the executive director is that runs that department when they when their regular meetings would be. They're very brief meetings, but also very informative. Um, if if all members that represent curriculum were available in the morning, you could have a morning meeting. If you would rather have an afternoon meeting, you could have an afternoon meeting. The the meeting times would be would be driven by the members of the committee and the and the. Um, cabinet members that run those committees would be um, so happy we, to work with your schedules. When we come to our regular meeting, how does that affect, uh, right now we have involvement from the audience, the union member can ask questions, you're going to eliminate that part I think it? we would like to get more to a more formal um, format at, at our meetings and, and limit engagement to the audience to speakers that sign up to engage with the board or if there's if there's support that's needed from an administrator for example in in the gallery that that request for support to answer a curriculum personnel or finance question would come from the superintendent so people you wouldn't engage with the board you wouldn't put Kara on the spot about something personnel related to her school unless I gave her the okay I so it becomes more formal, yeah, more formal. The, 
that's fine, but uh, a lot of times when you open the floor to people from to speak, mm -hmm. we haven't discussed some of the items that are on the agenda that they might talk about. So they have to come up and speak before they know right. what the what the issue is going to be amongst the board. Well, remember that with board docs, our board agenda is live and it gets created live, and it's open. And other than some sensitive matters, it that is viewable. Not to the public. Not to the public. No. So who's it viewable to? Administrators and uh, board. Uh, Carrie, Heidi, Nancy, you, and the board right. members. But we do put the agenda out to bargaining units and Friday afternoon and it, during the summer is three o'clock winter time four o'clock. Mm -hmm. We can have a conversation about this. This is what I yeah. would like to see. I, for one, am glad that you're bringing back these committees, yes. these three committees, because we get background, you know, mm -hmm. and knowledge to be able to talk about these issues. Yes. Yeah, but the only ones get the background of the, the committee members that attend, the, attend the committee meeting. But we're able to help him speak to those issues. Now, the, the, another point I'd like to make, Sam, though, is that mm -hmm. if there's an, a, another board member that's not on that particular committee, and unless we, ex unless we exceed three, anyone's in, is welcome. Like if there was a curriculum meeting and Brian wanted to come, but he sits on finance or personnel, it, this used to happen all the time. Yeah. Linda would pop in and say, how many you got? I'd like to sit in. And she'd come in yeah. and, and sit. As long as we don't create yeah. a quorum, yeah. it's okay to do that. I, I kind of like the well, uh, audience participation part myself, but I'll go along with whatever the majority feels. Where's my thoughts? I'll, I'll, I'll share it, just because I've done it both ways. The, you know the time on the board that I've been. You know, I've, I've done the small committees where you know I mean we all the three of us have. Um, I think yeah. you were, oh, yeah. were you, were you oh, yeah. Yeah. the four. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. Where we've done the committees during the day. You know we'd go in for personnel, do that, and then come here, which was great because then you could interact and come up with the anticipated questions so that they had you know so that the administration had answers at the board meetings, and then we went to the one meeting so our two meetings a month the first meeting was the committee meeting where if you weren't on that committee you sat out there if you remember right when we first started it um and it there is an advantage to you know being able to interact with you know audience members and you know people that are there but the downside of that is i've been uncomfortable with putting people on the spot and you know, people being put on the spot in the past year and our lack of <coughs> following Robert's rules for a couple of reasons. I mean, when we're sworn in to take an, our, our oath, part of our oath is to New York State Ed Law, and that is to follow Robert's rules, which we have not really, I mean, we've been so lax in it. So that's the part that I'm, you know, I, I see what you're saying, Sam, and I like that. Well, when maybe people have for, questions, an, for an example, uh, several I, times in our meetings, We've had to ask Jim Jackson a question, uh, or uh, uh, what's her name, Jennifer, Jennifer Cahill a question, and if, if you go by the new rule, the new what you're proposing, we're not going to be able to do that anymore. But I think part of the advantage is that if if, if um, the committees have already met and kind of hashed it out, there may be less questions when it comes to a formalized meeting, and maybe board members can answer questions. Um, as easily as somebody sitting in the audience. I think that's, is there any way to do some kind of a hybrid that's for the first meeting of the month? That's what I was just gonna right, say. Yeah. That, and it wouldn't be the first meeting of the month, because remember, both of our meetings are the same. We follow the same um, format. format. So engaging with them once a month is not gonna help them at the second meeting. But perhaps a good win-win would be to provide an opportunity for the audience to ask clarifying questions and um, if they wanted to ask a question and then we would answer their question but that what we're trying to get away from is this casual bantering back and forth or a board member saying hey Kara what do you think um, but I mean but certainly give them an opportunity to ask questions I'm not opposed to that I'm not trying to shut out 
the community. I think there still has to be procedure, though. I mean, we were just interacting with Warner. I mean, I asked a question. Because we hadn't talked about it yet. Yes. I liked that. You know, I think to take that away where I can, you know, follow up on something. But that's a little different because the, the right. discussion with Pat Warner, there was nothing that was on the agenda. We're talking about oh, saying okay. the agenda. Okay. So that's a little different. Okay. And it used to be even when you had somebody come and speak, you listened, you had their information, so that you're not taking up everybody's time clarifying for yourself, and then you could go and approach that person or go through the proper channels to get the information you needed and the clarification you needed. Right. You mean when? It used to be that when a speaker came up, we just sat and listened. We had all our contact information, and then afterwards we could uh, get the clarity that we needed. When speakers come to the mic, I take notes. For example, I have a page and a half of notes on Pop Warner, and then notes to myself to follow up with Rhonda, get to the bottom of it, and then respond back to whoever it is that signed in that we have um, contact information. But for, how am if I they're asking get my a question. questions? Yeah, that, that takes a week. I like my answers now. <laughs> <laughs> but I might be dead tomorrow. But we don't, our administrators aren't obligated to be at board meetings, and we want them to feel comfortable coming and engaging when it's appropriate. We don't want them to feel put on the spot. I re I'll oh, give you an I'm example. I'm not talking about asking yeah. them something. I'm talking about having a speaker up there presenting something oh. and doing a follow up question. That's a whole separate question because oh, now, well, you're, that's all I'm now you're talking about. Talking about whether or not you want to change the procedure around speakers who sign up to speak because the way it's supposed to occur is that a speaker comes to the mic they introduce themselves with their name and address they share for three minutes and we listen politely we don't engage with them but sometimes that happens but and, and it, we've gotten very loose with that over the last few years but that was never the way that it, it happened in the past and it's not the way it's intended but it's we up also, to you whether or not you want to do that. One of the things that we also used to do, I mean, I'm going way back, um, is after after the speakers spoke, anybody that signed up, we would take a five-minute recess. That's right. And then you could go approach Colton and say, okay, Chat. Colton, yeah. here's what I think you should yeah. do. Yeah. And yeah. That's, I mean, that's, that's nice. That's and, or, yeah. you that's know, nice. Colton, what have you, know, yeah. you thought yeah. about this? Mm -hmm. So yeah, if you, I had a chance sorry, to talk putting to you on the spot. But I think that is important. Yeah. That's important to have the clarity. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah because then you know it's right there. We, you're they just call it maybe public or something. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Right, and then they yeah. don't feel ignored and dismissed yeah. by you know. Yep. But we continue with our meeting and they process. walk out. Right. Or but yes, there's a process there's procedure, still, and then we know we have a certain amount of time that right. we have to. I'm probably going to goof up, so you better write this up. So I'll remind. I'm going to keep reminding. I'm going to keep reminding you. Are we? Is, is, does, is the board in agreement that we move, that we add the three agenda committees back? I don't yeah, know. I mean, no, just because depending on when the meetings are, unless you can make them 8 a.m., I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to make those meetings. Right. I, mean, I know that's my problem, not yours. We can do 8 a.m., this, this works this way for me, and um, I know we try to go. Um, we. Uh, <laughs> Um, <laughs> don't see that often. We, uh, I know we don't like the back and forth, but I know from time to time, using Rhonda, for example, she's always there for us. And yep. I don't know if I'm on a committee that Rhonda normally would be at, but I don't remember people like her necessarily being there at those type of meetings. Because I don't know if you're required to be like at committee meetings. They're not. Well, and that was the advantage of when we did the but committees. But they can be. So, no, I'm saying I don't want to take away from her schedule, but when we're here, Again, maybe this is what we're trying to avoid, but we can always say, hey, Rhonda, what do we know about this? And she always has the answer. Right. And if I'm at a committee meeting, then again, I took time off from work to be at, and if she's not required to be there, then I'm not getting the answers answered. And I know somebody can get back to it, but going back to my friend Sam's theory, I kind of want to know. Well, and that's that's the advantage of when we did the committees in that, that first Tuesday of the month, we would start the committees at 5. So then you did back-to-back -back personnel, curriculum, and finance. And then we, the board meeting would start at 6 o'clock. Oh. I mean, that was asked when we went from those individual committees that's during the day. No, I know it's not what you're talking about. But yeah, I remember those that. were, and that's when we did start to interface with um, people that would come yeah. because they knew what was on the agenda. And that's yeah. what I'm talking about with the hybrid model. I think, because right. I think Sam does like the give and take, and I heard some other people liking that. It was built in when we did the committee in the first part of the month and right. then the more formal in the second, right. but you're saying we need to be passing resolutions all month long. I think so. So we don't want to jeopardize that. So that's right. why I'm saying, could we have our first meeting of the month have a hybrid model? 
where we start with committee at five, like right, and then go into regular meeting. Would so that make um, for a very lengthy meeting? Yeah, which we want to avoid as well. But they weren't. That's the thing. They weren't lengthy meetings when we were doing it that way because then our questions were answered, and then you know the following meeting we were. The problem I mean, is you, gosh, what, we, what we're going to do, you you're, you're going to go over the same agenda items twice, so it's yeah. back to back. You're going to have a committee meeting, you're going to go over the agenda items, and then right. 10 minutes later, you're going to you're going to read them again and, and vote. No, on. that's not what we did. We, we did those, we did, we voted on them the following two weeks later. Right. At the next meeting. That's where the issue comes, so we, by, in two weeks later, we have new business the whole new agenda of business. Right, but then that stuff's covered in And we're the still next. talking about the stuff. Everything was put off two weeks. We have to be more timely with yeah. resolutions yeah. and pass them every two weeks. Right. To that caused right. problems. Right. But it was the purpose of my was being, the, Wasn't it generally problems with personnel, though? I thought it was just Well, if you look at the last year, not. you're going to see pretty he hefty agenda items in all three agenda areas, personnel, curriculum, <coughs> and finance, every meeting. It's rare that we have a light, maybe a light curriculum. Um. So Brian, you're not opposed to the concept, you're opposed to it because of your time with restraints, correct? For the most part, yes. Okay, are there other feelings about the committee? I think but I don't want the committee to work for you guys. You're retired, sir. And we could work around a committee that would, is <laughs> suitable for Brian's schedule. And I think, well, I think the same thing's probably going to happen to Brandon, too. We'll that was part of what Brandon used to say, and not to speak for him, but if I recall yeah. correctly, yeah. he'd say, I'll be there for the 9 o'clock meeting in the last 15 minutes, and I'm back out the door, so i got to take an hour off for 15. I mean, and that's, we yeah. understand that's part right. of the game, but. But we have some flexibility, too. But this way to make too. that easier, I think that's what he was saying, too. Yeah. So that's well, why we got away from should be rare day for, meetings. For board members who are volunteers who are sitting here. Mm -hmm. I mean, you mm -hmm. Do have jobs outside, so that should be rare that that would happen. We I can think. do 8 a.m. meetings, and we can do 4 o'clock meetings. I don't do 8 a.m. meetings. No, but if Brian said that, we're not the same committee. Right. Do you have a thought? No, I'm not amenable to, to either direction. I do like the um, I do like the interaction sometimes, just to get more information from the public vantage point. Yeah, I like to public. incorporate that information in. Uh, but I, I also like the ability, if we can split that difference with having the five minutes after that period to go and speak directly, sure. we can take care of that. And uh, I'm fine with the committee aspect, you know, either way. Okay. Yeah. I'm certainly not ever interested in putting an administrator on the spot. I don't think I've ever done that. I've never tried to embarrass anybody or ask a question. That, uh, normally, if I've got a question, I look at the agenda and I'll I'll contact the administrator ahead of time and have my right, answer before right. you even come to the meeting. So I don't ask right. the question. But, uh, Ideally, that's exactly what should I think happen. if uh, right. the only objection that I had was I do like some of that interaction with, mm -hmm. the, with the community. And if we can let, them, let the speakers come to the mic and have five minutes afterwards or 10 minutes and meet with them if we want to respond. I'm fine with that. I'm fine, and I'm not, and I wasn't suggesting that if you wanted to continue to have a, a portion after, with the the executive reads the agenda item, then then what do you say next, Karen? What's discussion? Discussion. If any discussion. If there's discussion among the board, um, if we just pause at that minute and look to the audience, if someone has their hand, I'm not opposed to answering questions. I just I. I think that this look very slow for yeah, no, procedurally. Yeah, I think this is works. a. I'm just trying to be. Exactly. No, yeah. I think the way we address it at the front end, because time constraints and the time for each speaker, and we can and we've okay. we've marked it out. But if we open that can of worms in the middle of yep. everything, things could really get extended. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. I need two members for personnel. Linda. Didn't we do this last? Week? We didn't do this. No, not these. We did the, the other ones. Not these are these. the three that would meet before each meeting. What did we do last time? Policy and. Oh, we audit those are the facilities. district committees. Okay. Okay. These are just agenda we, committees. We can just maybe just go around and what two committees what would, you, like would you be like? interested in, yeah. and then we'll I, see if it works out. I like personnel <laughs> because of my background. Okay. And um, probably curriculum. Okay. Sam? Finance? Can I have two? You can start with one. You know, start with one. We'll see what we can do. What we can do. We can get two. So we make it. 
He goes to me. Let's you? give Brian for now because he doesn't yeah. know he had enough time. Yeah. Uh, curriculum? Not very well, though. Uh, Not yep. very well. Mm -hmm. Oh, if we're you can pick two or you can oh, pick one. Finance. It's up whatever you feel like. Finance. Okay? Finance. Yeah. I'm comfortable with personnel and finance. I mean, I'm comfortable with curriculum too. No offense. <laughs> <laughs> non um, you know, so we're, we're excluding Brandon from. Right. No, I'll, I'll contact him. I'll because, ask him. Because if people have two, we can always take someone off. That's right. Sam, why don't you give us a second choice? What right. else so would you like? Two. You're, right now you said finance. What else? Curriculum or personnel? I know nothing about curriculum. Well, then that's the one you have to see. Sam, I I listen to the professionals for curriculum advice. I love that answer. <laughs> Heather? Um, I have myself for personnel and curriculum, but I yep. can fit in right Brian, if it worked out for you with time, what two would you be interested? Would you be um, interested? In? <clears throat> curriculum. Okay. And I'm not audit, so I might as well go on finance. Okay. Yeah, what about those other committees? Do they play into this at all? No, nope, they, they still exist. <laughs> These are Austin, just for the so agenda. Yeah, audit committee would be you get a whole pack of committees. Who wants so. policy quarterly? Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Yeah. And and facilities, so facilities regularly. Yeah. Facilities is the big one. Yeah, but Maybe we if you're on the facilities. Some facilities and when we're supposed to meet, them. it was a little confusing. Craig's email has been right now. <laughs> I started ignoring him. <laughs> yeah, I, I ignore him too, but if I ignore him, I miss a meeting. <laughs> no, we haven't, you haven't missed any. Okay. Um, so, so obviously, we don't need, we, we can't have four on each committee, so no. we, you know. Do three on each committee, yes. or alternatively, you have the four, but only two meet at a time. So then you're splitting the, the, the workload as well. So how do you guys want to do that? Yeah. I know. Um, Why don't you just? Do we have we 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 have five on curriculum right now. You can take me off. Huh? I'm, I'm not one of it. Linda, Tom, Sam, I said Heather, personal. and Brian. Sam did like Sam does a lot for. Oh, I said I do. I what? They, they took you off curriculum. He didn't want to. He said you didn't right. want to curriculum, right? No, I didn't. Yeah, no, I didn't. Yeah, you did. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Brian, thank you. Do you want, <laughs> why don't we? You ask. Do, do you know what Brandon's what, he, what his work day is? No. Why don't we go with this? Let me contact Brandon. If if there's a if he's interested in an early morning. And Brian can do an eight o'clock. Nancy's here at seven o'clock. But she can do it. Brian has flexibility. I was on policy before. Too. Yeah. Yeah. I about policy. You're on policy. You're still yeah. Yeah. They don't be this much. So. Right. Yeah, those are quarterly or right. yeah. yeah. When yeah, you did, so, you went needed. <laughs> <laughs> right. So why don't I reach out to Brandon, and then by email I can put out put it out, and we can whittle it down. Right. So I think if there's three on each committee. Yep. Then that's enough coverage. So if only two can make the meetings, we still have coverage. Right. So then, then there's no, the that's what we always do. There's no pressure. Right. If you can't make a meeting, that's there's right. no pressure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And perhaps another member of the team can contact you and just let you know. These are the issues what we've discussed. Right. Okay. That's kind of we can move to the agenda. Thank you. Any other items for the superintendent's report? Huh. No, no. <laughs> Next is committee discussion. Would there be any discussion from committee, committee members? <laughs> No, we're trying to find one. <laughs> <to teach. laughs> Just a reminder: there is a policy committee meeting for the board before the next board meeting at 4:30. Right. Next is the consent agenda with eight items: minutes of the reorganizational meeting and the regular board meeting of July 1st, 2019; special education board report July 16th, or excuse me, June 16th. No, I'm July. sorry. July 16, 2019, approval of the treasurer's consolidated report and monthly budget status report June 2019, monthly budgetary transfer report June 2019, approval of the unaudited Oswego City School District district financial report July 2018 through June 2019, Oswego Middle School extra classroom activities <coughs> fund report June 2019, Oswego Middle School Extra Classroom Activities Fund Report Annual Report 2018-19 and Fund Balance Projection Report June 
19. If I could have a motion, please. Move it. Second. Second. Any discussion? Yeah, just a question. This is something I've, I don't think I've ever seen before. The unedited district oh, no. financial report. Unaudited? Unaudited. What did I say? Edited? Unaudited. Unaudited. I'm wondering why uh, did she add that disclaimer? That Nancy did oh, mention that it's just a report that the auditors have has not seen yet, but she wanted to make sure that you receive this report anyways, and the auditors will see it at one point. Yeah, they we're just have it without yet. ever having seen it, yeah. without the auditors seeing right. it. That's my concern. Mm -hmm. And also, if you could, please, would you? Uh, it's on the computer, but it's this oh, way, sorry. and uh, I get tired trying to read it like this. And yeah. I can't flip so it. The attachment? Like that too. The yeah. attachment? Yeah. Oh, the, whole okay. the whole audited Some report. Some of them are. The, the beginning isn't, and then, then it goes into sideways. Oh, and so if I could have a hard copy. Yeah, definitely. At some point. Probably because it's a report and it goes this way on the paper. Yeah, yeah. but some of them you have to go this way, and the other ones you have to There's go that way. Just read them like that. No, no, no. You can, know, like, it switches. Yeah, right. oh. Sam, would you like to table or remove the approval of that one uh, document then as well? Yeah, until would we like get, to make that we get the hard copy in. Yes, I would. Remove, remove number five. Yeah, yeah. Those are any discussion yeah. on, on yeah, that? Yeah, I'd like an explanation from Nancy why we would approve it before it's been audited. Usually yeah. we approve. I've never seen an yeah. un unaudited un un report. Mm -hmm. okay. We have a first and second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. So we'll go back to everything but that. Okay, if I could have a motion please to approve one, two, three, four, six, seven, and eight. Second, please. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Next on the agenda is curriculum with Carrie Clex. <coughs> Number one is the district comprehension improvement plan for 2019. 2020. This is a required state plan due to our asset designation as a targeted district. Could I have a motion, please? Oh, I'll move it. Second? A second. Can Any discussion? Not a discussion, but just a question. Uh, with this new format, are we going to lose this now? Nope. No. Okay. We're going to keep this is good. So we keep the cabinet executive reading no, there. No. The, <laughs> no, no, I hope not. No, I just nope. like when you read yeah, something like and we get questions, you you can answer them. Okay. Yeah. Right. They're sponsoring the resolution. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Okay, number two is the New York State Textbook Law. These are two um, textbooks from our Oswego Community Christian School, Social Studies and Science. Could I have a motion, please? Make the motion. Second? Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. I Next should, is personnel. I and probably should have stated at the beginning of the meeting that oh, Nancy sorry. and Heidi are both at a conference. So Carrie was briefed on, during, our, we do an agenda review um, on a Thursday, mm -hmm. and then um, they review the agenda items with Carrie and I so that Carrie could share the resolutions for them. So you were in three hits? She's doing uh, it all. Again, your heart they keep doing this. <laughs> yeah, don't ask for anything. That's scary. Yeah, you're the I, utility player. That'd be really mean. Oh, you're okay. scared. First is professional staff recommendation, re resignation, Lindsay Brazil uh, Elementary at Riley, and Andrea Oriola, a school counselor at Lee. Could I have a motion, please? Move it. Second? Second. Any discussion? I uh, discussion. It doesn't re relate directly to it, but it, it's something that I see it, and it's something that I just want to bring on the you know, horizon for it's a concern that I have, is that, uh, you know, one of these people we have for one year and then she's gone back to uh, a region where she's going to be closer to home. And the number of times when we're hiring people, I look at people and we're hiring outside the district. And then they're coming and going, coming and going. And I think that, I, I mean, it's maybe idealistic and naive, but when we incentivize and keep those people local, and they live in the community. It strengthens the community all the way around. And I, not only does it strengthen us financially, it strengthen us, strengthens us 
you know, in, in building the fabric of the community. And I don't know how we do it, how we incentivize to keep, um, keep people local and have them invest and reinvest in the community. But it's something I want to look at in the future because I, I you know, if we have teachers that are living here and there's, their children are in our school district, it strengthens the district. And it strengthens by example and it strengthens neighborhoods and communities. And it's just one of those you know, things for me that I, we have to look at keeping and maintaining our, our. Tam, I think one way you do it is, is you look really hard when local, local kids apply for jobs. You look, give them a really good hard look because this individual that's leaving here now, going back to her home, right? I mean, that's exactly what, what she's doing, and that's what many of them do. So I think if we look closely at our own hometown kids, but, and I'm not saying hire them just because they're hometown. No, no. If everything's equal. Right. If everything's equal, or conversely, to incentivize, do we want them to move here? We want them to relocate to this area. Well, is right. it more than incentivizing? Is it, I mean, is that something that's negotiated? Um, no, no. Or can it be policy? You can, it can't even, I, I don't think you'd want to make it. Well, you could make it, pol you could make it policy. I know in some districts there are policies um, that have to be embedded into negotiating contracts. For example, my wife's district, you, if you're an administrator in Hudson Falls Central School District, you live in Hudson Falls. Um, if that's rare, and it's particularly rare with teachers, especially in a small city school district or a larger district, we, what you have seen though over the last few years is a great number of local talent come through and be board approved for teaching and, and support positions. Because the principals understand that my wish is that if all else is equal, that we go with the local candidate. Because I agree with you. And we do look very closely at our local talent. And if all else is equal, we love to bring them into our schools. You heard me talk about it at graduation. Come back, work for us, work with us, teach here, start a business. Um, ultimately, we want the very best candidate. And very often, that's those are our kids. And Tom, I think we've been advocating that. I know Kathleen and I and Sam, all the years we've spent on the board, we've advocated, we've stated that. And I also think administratively that, you know, if we have administrators in our midst that, you know, um, want to work within their hometown, we should take a good look at them. But I also agree that everything has to be equal when you're interviewing them. Right. And yeah. then we go with the home. Yeah, and I agree with uh, yeah. that, but we want, we want to draw them here and keep them because again, I think it's, right. it, it, it makes sense in the fabric of the community. Yes. Just going to make All of our staff, not just yes. teachers and administrators. Exactly. As I mean, we're looking at, I believe we're 60, 40, 40% 40 live outside the district. And I think it's important that if we want to qualitate or quantitatively look at, let's get that to 65, let's get it to 70, let's see if we can, what we can do to grow it, whatever we can do to look at that. I have, I mean, it's probably improper, but I've said to teacher candidates, hey, you want to come and live here? It's a great place to live. And I probably shouldn't. I wouldn't hold it against Chris them, but I'm, in, but I'm curious. Chris mm -hmm. So you you're, probably. You're talking more, probably. not just about local kids who grew up here. You're talking about no. folks who are wanting to be right. invested here, who are going to pay taxes Will here, who are going right. to exactly. yeah. um, be invested yeah. in this community. Right, yeah. we're investing in yes. like the reciprocal investment. Yep. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Two is professional staff recommendation, a leave of absence. Stephanie Kraft, an elementary teacher at KPS, is taking on a second title and becoming a reading teacher at Rackham. Motion, please. Move it. Second? Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Three, professional staff recommendation of a recession, recession, she rescinded her position for Maria Conway, a regular substitute at Riley, um, because at, you'll see the next one she took on, a pro she's taking on a probation. Motion? Move it. Second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Four for professional staff recommendation, probationary. This is Maria Conway for elementary assignment. Motion? motion. Second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Five, professional staff recommendation probationary. 
Timothy Wink, probationary teaching assistant at Middle School. Motion, please. Move it. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Six professional staff recommendation, regular substitutes. Um, Denver Carter, teaching assistant at the high school. Alicia Haf Hafner, elementary at Pichu. Mina McKenna, Nolan, um, elementary Layton, and Lauren Perry, elementary KPS. Motion? Move it. Second, Linda. Any discussion? Motion? Or, I'm sorry, all in favor? Did you first and second the same? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, you're like a stuff that was a baker. All in favor? Aye. <laughs> Opposed? Seven extra compensatory position for EDC. This is um, Christy Fryer as an in service instructor. Motion? I make the motion. Second? <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Eight extra compensatory position recommendation for the extended school year um, listed below. Several positions as needed. Motion? Ryan? Second? I'll second. Tom? Any discussion? My only discussion was on the letter of support, there's only three of the names on there, as opposed to the four. That was my only. See that? Yeah. Am I correct in that? You are correct. All right. Just so there's one missing. One missing from there, yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nine, extra composition at Riley, as listed below, as needed. Motion? Oh, I'm sorry. No, nope. go ahead. My fault. I was just going to say for the 2019 20 school year. Motion, please. Nova. Linda. Second. I'll second. Tom. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Opposed. Ten extra compensatory position. Seven twelve OMS and OHS team leader for special education. Amy Schutz. Motion. I make the motion. Tom. Second. Second. Sam? Any discussion? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Eleven extra compensatory position for the middle school. Um, they are the intramurals that will be serving for the 1920 school year. <coughs> You'll remember that this is this, this was new to the budget this year, the addition of intramurals at the middle school, and there were some previous questions about the stipend amounts. If you look at um, Amy Adele, for example, is 1,022. That represents one day. So if you did two days, the, the, it would be double that, 2044, 3066. And so Dan Rogers, as you can see, is, is doing four days. So that's why their numbers are all over the place. They sometimes choose to share positions. Motion. I know you didn't ask for that, but it came up earlier. Mm -hmm. Motion? Move it. Sam, second? I'll second. Tom? Good. Discussion? Yeah, I just have a question. Uh, I was when I looked at this and I saw, wow, that's a lot of that's a lot of intramural mm -hmm. going on. But so these normally would have like two or three in a building, but these people are splitting it up. Is that the way they yeah, split boys and two, girls? Yeah, two days a week. Days, two days. Two days a week, um, two teachers for each session, boys and girls together. Okay. So Good. I'm glad to see intramurals come to middle school. Yeah. I'm counting 15 days though. Each, each 1,022 is, is one day per week, correct? Mary Beth, you want to no. chime in? Do you want me to? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. No, we so, have to go to the committee. <laughs> I don't know if I'm supposed to speak or not. So, like Amy O'Dell, she's making 1,022, and those other folks that are 1,022, we broke the intramurals up into four eight week sessions. And so, where you see the 1,022 folks, they're working one session two days a week one session two days a week so they're actually working 16 days for that total and then when you go to the 2044 so sean clark and chuck riley they're doing two sessions two days a week so 32 days patrick's doing two days a week for 24 weeks 
Dan's doing two days a week for 48 weeks. And if you take that total 63.88 and multiply it times either 16 days, 32 days, 64 days, or 128, that's what you'll get. And is a day a one hour session there, Doc? One hour session. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we did that based on the amount that the mm -hmm. elementary folks have been earning mm -hmm. all along. Yes. So each, so each day of the week there's two so there's no more than two. There's no more than two. And we already scheduled them all for the whole year, you guys. So there's actually a calendar out. We did it against Mentor Scholars. So Mentor Scholars are on Monday, Wednesday. And we booked all the Mentor Murals for Tuesday and Thursday for the entire 32 week session. Okay, then the next, I know it's not this month, but the next one is the TAs. So what's, how right. do you decide well, we put the when you need those? We put the TAs on because there's a couple students with disabilities in the building that we suspect will want to be part of intramurals, and they get TA support like in phys ed. So we put it out to the TAs as kind of a sub TA position, so that if we find out that one of those students with disabilities wants to be part of intramurals, and they have a TA on their IEP for PE, then we'll have the TA work that day. So these are all that's needed? Yeah. yeah. Does that help? Yes, thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Did we just vote on 11 and 12? Yeah. Just 11. 11. 11. 11. And 12. Good position <laughs> at the middle school are the TAs that will support the intramurals as needed. Motion? Move that. Linda? Second? I'll second. Tom? Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 13, support staff recommendation, resignation. Megan Wilson, a senior typist for the position that she's holding at the high school. Motion? <laughs> Make the motion. Move. Second. Second? Sam? Yes. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 14, support staff recommendation, a leave of absence for Den Denver Carter, a school monitor at OMS. She's going to serve as a PA at OHS. Motion? Move it. Sam, second? Second. Tom? Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 15, support staff recommendation probationary. Catherine Hook, senior typist at Pitchu, and Mary Warrington, teacher aide at Lincoln. Motion? Move it. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 16, support staff recommendation, permanent, Christopher Coon, custodial worker at the high school, Rachel Heath, teacher aide at Mineto, Christian McMahon, oops, custodian at Mineto, and Nicholas Sams, I shouldn't have read him, sorry, um, teacher aide at Mineto, and Kevin White Davis for graduate house. Motion? Move it. Second? I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 17 substitute and temporary employees <coughs> as follows. Motion? Move it. Second? Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And 18 substitute temporary position rates. These are due to the increase in minimum wage um, and the increase in LPN and RN's new salary and school bus driver increase and also a translator service increase. Motion? Make the motion. Second? Aye. Any discussion? Yeah. 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 I just want a discussion on the uh, um, bus driver because it was the number that you came to or that they came to on that was uh, in a competitive range relative to what we were looking at before you know i thought that was a which is where we were looking at so it'll be interesting to see the results of that right it's going to make a difference if you back. Have you noticed we have buses staged across the community to the signs on them yeah. mm -hmm. i just have a question i'm not i'm not objecting to the, to the raises but don't we have to negotiate those with the union Is it, well the um the minimum wage increase we don't negotiate and um, I don't know the answer to the school nurse one I'm sure they're not going to say no we don't want the race <laughs> yeah. 
But I'm just, you know, just you wondering. told us at the last meeting to give him a raise, so we did. Yeah, and you did. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you. Listen. <laughs> what? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Next, before I turn it over to Carrie Plass, I ask the board to motion to amend the finance agenda to add item seven, Shadowbrook Senior High Housing Matter. If I could have a motion to do that. I move the motion. Sam, second. Second. Tom. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. I will turn it over to Carrie. <laughs> First is contract between Durham School Services and Oswego City School District. Durham contracts for us with a uh, run out to Mexico campus and also for our McKinney dental rooms. Can I have a motion, please? A little bit. Second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Two, a contract with Hillside Center for P for 2019-20 therapeutic education programming. This is a yearly contract that we um, do up front in case there are students that need to be placed. Motion? Second. Second? I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Three, contract between upstate cerebral policy and the Oswego City School District. This is for students that are placed at training. Motion? Make a motion. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Four is an agreement between the Oswego City School District and Frontline Technology Group. This is a contract for the translating services that Frontline would, would provide if there is a need for any IEPs that need to be translated into a uh, home language. Motion? Move it. Second? <clears throat> Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Five is a contract between Oswego City School District and Integrative Counseling Services. This is for clinical work that will be done at Layton and High School. Move it. Second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Six is budgetary transfer request from building and ground supplies to cartage or to cover maintenance with butler disposal. Motion? Make a motion. Second? Second. Any discussion? Um, I, the Whoops, question, I have another one. Did, didn't we do this last year as well with butler? We have to do the same thing in terms of with that. So I was just wondering if we had the rates changed again or we don't know. I don't know. So we'll have to add some yeah. Okay. Well, I, so I think it, there's a contract. It's contractual mm -hmm. for the year. But uh, sometimes added extra cards. Extra cards is required. Like when they clean out the high school at the end of the school year, that dumpster fill up real quick when the kids clean their library and so forth. So that that's that always builds in builds in the bill a little bit higher. Always. I would assume that's the answer to your question. Are you comfortable? Yeah, I'm comfortable with that. I just wonder if we had budgeted enough to, because we keep moving it every year, I'm sure should we count for a little bit more? Yeah. But she's probably building the budget conservatively and hoping that right. there's not extra garbage. Right. Um, right. <laughs> Which we know they don't. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. And I will turn it back to Carrie Plass for the second part of that resolution. Okay, the other part is a budgetary transfer um, from Bolsey Services to Computer Software to cover school stream electronic school email subscription in the amount of 4900 Motion? Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah, you took a jump. That's, That's all right. <laughs> next, <laughs> next is item number seven, the resolution authorizing settlement regarding the Shadowbrook Senior Housing LLC matter. Whereas in 2018, petitioner Shadowbrook Senior Housing LLC commenced tax assessment review proceedings against the town of Scribe, Oswego County, New York, seeking a reduction in the assessed value of properties in its own in its owns in the town of Scriba, which are identified as tax map parcels 12917-01-28 and 
12917-01-31. And whereas the district filed and service legal served legal papers to become an interventor respondent in these proceedings, and whereas the board believes that settlement in this matter is in the best interest of the district, and whereas the town attorney for the town of Scraba has advised that the town board will also approve the settlement offer. Now therefore be it resolved by the, the board of the district as follows. Section one, the board of the district authorizes its attorney to settle the tax assessment, assessment proceeding with petitioner for a prospective reduction of the properties assessed value pursuant to the proposed settlement in the table listed in the attached memo. Section two, this resolution shall take effective effect immediately. The question of the adoption of the foregoing resolution was duly put to vote and the resolution was thereby declared duly adopted. If I could have a motion. I'll make a motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Next on the agenda um, is student representative I just want to let you know the student rep will be joining us the first meeting in September. Um, we gave her the summer off to enjoy. Um, Dr. Uh, Pugh, I did, so she will be here the first meeting in September. Next is items from the board. Would the board have any items tonight? Oh, no, you go first. Um, okay, so again, I just wanted to uh, thank Pop Warner for coming here tonight. That, um, as I mentioned, I, I met with them briefly before. Um, and just understanding, you know, as a a parent, a coach, school board, everything can go along with that. I think, I really think they did a great job presenting tonight and, and to me, they have all the right reasons for what they're doing and I know we need to do our homework to find out where we go but I hope we can help them in some ways because I think they hit all the buttons on what they're doing, um, including if you go back and watch the videotape tonight when we talked about some different things, we referred to our facilities during the camera thing as the football field that was referred to. It's really an athletic field because it's used in lacrosse and football and soccer and everything else, but we're still talking about football. And, and we know it is mentioned that it is struggling a little bit, but the feeder program I think is important. And, um, and I know we got to do what we got to do, but I'm just hopeful that we can help them out. That it's, it's a great group of kids. And again, the volunteer organization that uh, seemed to have the kids really look up to them. So I, I just want to thank them for coming tonight. And, I absolutely agree with you, Ryan. Um, I also wanted to just mention, and Ryan's not gonna cringe, but um, there has been talk amongst the board of wanting, because <laughs> it's a time commitment, um, <laughs> wanting some sort of a, a retreat, workshop style retreat, where um, we have uh, a mentor, and we really work through some issues, and just kind of jumpstart um, the year, and uh, maybe even talk about what um, tools we're gonna use for evaluations, and, and um, just, Kind of, yeah. you know, just don't start where we're at and, and make sure we're all on the same page. So, um, Dean is looking into uh, a mentor for us, some kind of facilitator. Yep, and I'll provide you with a list of options, and then you can talk about it. Yeah, and our, and then just just to get a little feedback, or is are people excited about this? Is something people would want to do? Oh, absolutely, yeah. we've been wanting it for over a year. Yeah. I know in the past, being on the board, these have really helped a lot in yeah. making sure. Yep. And it's working as a team, so um, fantastic. If you have specific time restraints, if you could communicate with uh, Dean just so that we're really um, yeah. respectful of that, that would yes. be great. Are yeah. we looking to do something before the start of the new school year? We're really looking for yes. like the end of, uh, of August, which I know is right around the corner for people, yeah. and I get that. So if you have like a vacation planned or something already in play, if you could um, communicate that to Dean just so we definitely miss that or time of day, you know, any right. of those things. Um, oh, we're, day saying, week. we're thinking about a half day. <laughs> <laughs> a half day retreat. Like a half day, yeah, half, half day. day. Like, uh, yeah. 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 Well, something big for get it. We'll do it. <laughs> I'll come. <laughs> One thing I forgot to mention, if I could. Are you done, Heather? I am, I am. Yeah. I Thanks. wanted to mention in the superintendent's report, and I didn't get it. I, we were running along, and I think I missed it. But we probably had the best administrative retreat this week of my superintendent, actually of my time as an administrator in Oswego. Um, we spent one full day together. 
um, with Irina Gertzman as our facilitator. We, we did a lot with um, expanding our mission and vision, focusing in on building our team. And we did some things that were uncomfortable. But in the end, um, I think we're really valuable in the feedback that I've gotten from the administrative staff and my own personal feelings about um, day one. We did one full day, and then we did a second half day that included legal update, which was actually almost three hours of legal updates, um, and then also some additional team building activities on the second half day. Um, we traditionally do a day and a half. Um, we moved a, a off site this year, and it was it was I I believe it was a very valuable day and a half. So I wanted to really put that out there. Go to Blue Mountain? Nope. We went to uh, we went to Hotel Syracuse. It's a good idea for ours, though. Yeah. Yeah. We well, used to go to Blue Mountain. Yeah. We gotta get off site yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> off site is good. Yeah, we want a team build too. We're going to do that. That's okay. what this will be. But we spent. Um, we've been. We'll go to Rudy's. We've been going to SUNY. <laughs> we've been going to SUNY Oswego for the last four years, three years, or four years, and we're very appreciative of the space that they gave us. But there was some feedback that it was time to freshen it up a little. So we did a full day at Syracuse uh, Marriott and um, in a conference room that they provided for us for free. And um, we know somebody there. And, um, <laughs> and then the second day was here in the boardroom and Kate Reed did really a, a great legal update. We've been using John Miller from Bond, Jennings and Kingo for the last three years and he's no longer with Bond. And uh, so this year we tapped Kate and she exceeded my expectations. I, so, thank you. And we'll look to do the picture next time, right? Yes. yes. So thank you to everyone who dressed up. <laughs> Could I have a motion for adjournment, please? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye